guys. Lesson 1.2. We're going to look at this for a few minutes. We won't have a lot of time, but we will pick up tomorrow and hopefully get the bulk of it in tomorrow. Now, lesson 1.2. It's like three pages front and back in your notes, if I recall. I break this up into three days worth, three individual lessons. So that assignment right there, page 94, 2 through 20 evens, goes with the front and back of the first page of lesson 1.2. Okay, so at the back of the front page, you see homework in a blank. That's going to be specifically just for that. Okay, now, functions, domain, range, all these words you've been hearing since Algebra 1. Okay, we've just got to put them all back together. So a function, okay, a function from a set D to a set R is a rule that assigns each element in D to a unique element in R. That's your official mathematical definition. What do you guys know about functions? They carry out tasks. Okay. I'm confusing my cybersecurity with math again, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to argue, yeah. you know, a function will carry out a mathematical task. What? Okay, you've got an input and an output, right? So it's the relationship between input and output. Um, when we're looking at functions, notice right here it mentions the values in D cannot repeat. What's D standing for? Domain. domain, right? So the values in the domain do not repeat. We have a test that we can do on a graph to know if something's a function. And that is the, remember the vertical line test? You draw a vertical line, it can only touch the graph in one spot. If it touches it in more than one spot, it's not a function. Or we can just look and, you know, the values in the domain cannot repeat. So domain, abbreviated is D here, but it's a set D of input values. Or, in other words, it is the X's. If domain is the input or the X's, then range is the output or the Y's. Okay, so um, alphabetical is my shortcut. If domain and range you think alphabetically, X, Y is alphabetically, right? D comes before R, X comes before Y. And the easiest way to check and see if something is a function, I just mentioned this, yes? Vertical line test is the easiest way. If you have a graph, it's the easiest way is you draw the vertical line. Does it cross the function in only one place at a time. If you draw a vertical line and it touches a function twice on the same vertical line, then it fails the test and it's not a function. Now, we're going to look a little bit at functions. We're going to look a little bit at domain and a little bit at range. So, some thoughts here, and we will delve into this more tomorrow when we look more at domain. But when we talk about domain, we're going to look at the fact that all polynomials have infinite domains. So using the idea of negative infinity or positive infinity. So the idea that a polynomial, like a parabola or a cubic that you, you know, some of these things you guys saw, right, just your traditional graphs, they have infinite domains, meaning my x-axis goes left to right, yes. And so my graphs are going to go infinitely left and right. So we'll use that as an, you know, something to help us along the way. Denominators can never equal zero because we can't divide by zero, right? So denominators can never equal zero. And then the inside of a square root must always be positive. And so here when it says greater than or equal to zero, what are they trying to say? That's math speak for saying the inside of a square root must always be positive. Um, some things that we're going to use here. First of all, remember f of x when you see the function notation. That is also equivalent to representing y. Um, I'll use a number line at some points to kind of help you think through your domain and range. 
What is that saying? Not equals are holes. What is like the thing from last year or the one paper? Well, I say when we talk about holes, that's when there's a factor on top and a factor on bottom that can cancel. Oh, just kidding. Okay. So, that was something else. I guess the fact maybe it's going back here, the denominator cannot equal zero. That's going to be some kind of break, whether it be a hole or an asymptote. And then we're going to use interval notation for our answers. Okay, so we'll talk about these as we go through the different examples, as opposed to me spending a bunch of time right now. Now, Example one, is y equals x squared a function? Yes. yes. why? Because it makes it a problem, which is an issue. Okay. So, the first thing that Connor mentioned was it makes a parabola, yes? So it makes a parabola, specifically a parabola, if it's y equals x squared, that goes through... Zero, zero. Vertical line test? How's the vertical line test go? If I draw a vertical line, will it just touch my graph at one spot? spot? I just touch my graph at one spot, yes? If I do another vertical line, any place I draw a vertical line, it's only touching the graph at one spot. <coughs> The other thing you can think about, think about an XY chart. If you think about an XY chart, if we say put zero in, zero squared is zero. If I put one in, one squared is one. I only caught that if you're watching. Caught myself before I said it out loud. Two, if you put two in, two squared is four. What if I put negative two in? Okay. Does this xy chart allow me to be a function? Yes, because the values in D cannot repeat. Do any domain values here repeat? No. So this, yes. It is a function. Y equals x squared falls into the category of it being a polynomial. Okay, it's a polynomial. It's going to go on and on forever to the left and the right. But it is a function. Okay, we'll pick up tomorrow and we'll start with example two, which will be pretty quick. And then three and four will focus on domain and range. <laughs>